Okay, well, welcome back to the workshop and part two of the Cambria Fun Fighter P51 Mustang build. Okay, so that's the front upper fuselage size glued in place and now sanded down to the top of those three formers. Uh, according to the instructions, the next step is to fit part 17, but before I do that, I've fitted the throttle snake and also uh, epoxied the inside of the tank bay uh, to fuel proof it and the bulkhead and I can now get on and fit part 17. I set the part 17 uh, in position and what I've done now is I've just roughly sanded the front and rear fuselage pretty much to shape did a bit of final fettling a bit later on now I did skip a step earlier on and that was to, to mount the engine, fix the engine on the mount but you need the spinner in order to do that in order to get the measurement of the position of the engine correct so I'm still waiting for the spinner to arrive so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get on and fix and mount the, the servos inside so that's going to be my next step OK I've got the servos in now that's the arrangement I've got uh, with the throttle elevator and rudder servos in position there and I've used F5 to fix one of those spruce spars too and while that's been drying I've also cut the uh, aileron parts I haven't uh, hinged them yet but I've done that for both wings and sanded down the tips so the wings are pretty much all ready just got to do the, uh, the hinging and then the link to the servo to push the torque rod down there which I'll be doing later. Okay I've gone back to step 14 fitting the engine and mounts. The spinner needs to be between 80 and 85 millimeters from the uh, F2 former. I had to cut out uh, part 16 in order to do that which you would have to do anyway. I've now got to fit these parts around the engine to uh, form the cowling. So the two sides and the bottom 20 plus a bit of um, angle in there as well to support it all. Now I'm going to use what I call the Peter Miller method of doing this. I call it the Peter Miller method because that's where I first came across it when I was um, building the ballerina which is one of Peter's designs and that's the way he does it and um, I've used it ever since. So what you do is you space back the, the ring which I think you can just see there there's a spacer here which just spaces the ring back enough to give clearance between um, the uh, propeller spinner uh, and then the nose ring and then I've just got to uh, cut down the sides accordingly and, and fit them in which should be hopefully pretty simple so I'm going to get on and do that part now and we'll have another look at that when I've done OK, cowling blocks in place now, sides, bottom, got a couple more bits to put in the, in the front there, but engine fits, silencer fits, so I'll get on with that bit now. I've taken the engine out and got sanding and planing to get the front end looking something like the shape of a P51 Mustang hopefully. There's a bit more to go and I've put a bit of filling in. So uh, I'll be doing another trial fit of the engine, make sure that the, the spinner matches the front, uh, etc. Um, so yeah, a bit more to do just yet. Okay, I'm happy with the fit of the engine and I've shaped the front end. I think it's pretty, just about right, I think, really. Um, I've done a few other little bits and pieces. I've um, fitted the uh, throttle snake, soldered up both ends. Um, I've also slightly in raised the edges of the cockpit area because the cockpit was only just about meeting the wood so I wanted to raise that a little bit more so that the cockpit's got a decent surface area to, to be glued onto. 
Um, what else have I done? Oh yes, um, there's a hardwood wing bearer at the front, which I've glued and just clamped at the moment. That done. I've also been doing some work on the wings. And I'm just preparing to glue in the torque rods. So you cut a channel in here. Which I think you can see there, cut a channel in there. Use a very sharp knife, I would suggest to do that. And then just take out the foam. Having previously cut the torque rods, it's already comes pre-bent that end, but you have to cut it off and bend it this end. Uh, to suit the wing and so you've got a channel that's just deep enough for that rod and then the idea is that you um, half fill that with epoxy put in the torque rod top it up with epoxy and then I've got this I've pre-cut this four millimeter wide strip of bolster which will then just go on the top there and the uh, masking tape either side just protects the wing from the epoxy. So that's going to be the next thing that I'll be doing. Okay, I'm ready to epoxy the torque rod into the wing. This is my first attempt at this method, so uh, fingers crossed all goes well. I've cut my channel into the wing, um, four millimeters wide. Uh, and uh, just above the bottom skin so cleared out the foam I've put a little bit of blue tack at the end to uh, form a seal to stop the epoxy running out that end and I've got a bit of cap strip which I should be using to put on top at the final stage I've um, applied Vaseline to the torque rod so what I've got to do now is mix up the epoxy and we're away Short rod. Just going to put a little bit of blue tack at the end there to seal that off and I've got the final layer of epoxy in. Uh, looks so good so far. Just a little bit too much epoxy in there. I'm just going to take a little bit away. Okay, and fit the 
strip. Okay, and then remove the tape. Okay, so that's the first one done. We hope pretty much that, that uh, works out. It looks okay from here. There's just a little bit left on top of the capping just to sand down when that's dry. So I'll put that to one side now to dry and uh, get on with the second one. Right, I'll finish part two there and uh, we'll get on with part three very soon. See you then.